Today we're going to be discussing air fuel ratio and what it means for your car. Now this video was produced in conjunction with High Performance Academy. They do a whole bunch of online courses on engine building workshops, how to tune, things like that. I'm going to put a link in the description for you to go and check out those courses because they've got some free courses too that you can look at and hopefully you can learn some more details there if you like what you're seeing here. But my primary aim today is to just run through a few of the basics and clear up any misconceptions you may have about air fuel ratio and explain things like lambda, why you'd go rich or lean, stuff like that. When it comes to burning any sort of fuel, we have something that's known as stoichiometry. Now, what that means is basically how much fuel do you need for a given amount of air, or conversely, how much air do you need for a given amount of fuel? So the way that the chemical makeup of these fuels is, is that in order to burn them, you need a certain amount of oxygen, which is provided by the air, and you can do calculations to work out what the stoichiometric ratios are of each fuel you're trying to burn. So for example, we have gasoline or pure octane, which you need 14.7 parts of air for every one part of fuel you burn. Uh, for diesel, it's 14 and a half to one, ethanol 9 to 1, methanol 6.5 to 1, and of course nitromethane that they use on top fuel dryers is 1.7 to 1. And straight away we can see that we've got quite different ratios depending on what fuel we've got. And with things like ethanol, stuff like that, they've got basically encapsulated oxygen within their molecules. And this means they don't need as much air to burn a given amount of fuel. When it comes to things like nitromethane, you can see the obvious benefits of if we have fuel that, let's say that it's a similar energy density to octane, if we're burning sort of seven, eight times as much fuel, we're going to end up with significantly more energy per combustion event. So that can give you a basic rundown on some sort of air fuel ratios. But of course, the air fuel ratio itself is a fairly abstract term. We can see that for each of these fuels, I've got a different number and all that. So what I want to do is introduce you to the concept of lambda. Now, lambda is basically how rich or lean a mixture is, and it's expressed as sort of one. So one is the stoichiometric ratio, and lower than that is rich, higher than that is lean. So if I have a lambda of 0.95 for my car, it means that I'm running slightly rich. If it's 1.1, I'm running slightly lean. And the beauty of lambda is, is that we just work out that value off the stoichiometric ratio for your given fuel. So whether you're tuning on gasoline or ethanol, you still are targeting a lambda of one for stoichiometric. So now that we've got the terminology out of the way, let's talk about what are the effects of running different air fuel ratios. Now, of course, your natural inclination is probably to think that you want to run a stoichiometric ratio. It's the correct amount of fuel for the amount of air that's going into your engine. But this isn't really the case. Uh, while many production cars do target stoichiometric ratios at low load conditions, this is largely a consequence of emissions. So what we more want to look at is the more common thing of most people tend to run performance cars into the richer side of things when you're under high throttle loadings, wide open throttle, stuff like that. The reason is, is that if we plot our lambda versus our torque over here, we basically have, if that's a lambda of one there, and let's say this is 0 0.7 there and 1.2 there, we basically get that as our plot, okay? Where that is the stoichiometric ratio, and then this is going to be our peak torque. Now we can see that it's actually on the richer side of things. And I'll just put up here a graph that's taken from a real dyno log from the High Performance Academy videos where they actually do this precise experiment on an engine. They hold it at a constant RPM and then they vary the lambda reading across and see what torque it makes. So we can see that we actually are producing our peak torque well below our ideal stoichiometric ratio. Now this is primarily because while Theoretically, it's best to have stoichiometric for peak power and peak burn efficiency. In reality, you never get quite perfect mixing of the fuel. So adding a bit more fuel ensures that you burn all of that air. And you'll waste a tiny bit of fuel, obviously, but burning all that air ensures peak power and torque. If you run to the lean side, you're obviously burning less fuel, less air, because you're burning all your fuel, but you've got less air in general. So therefore, we end up with less power overall. And generally we end up with quite a wide band of air fuel ratios that we can tune through. And this goes down to more what the key reason is behind why you'd want to run your performance car rich on the lambda scale is that rich air fuel mixtures generally cool down your temperatures in your combustion chamber. 
When we run at wide open throttle, we get more and more energy from each combustion event. So this produces two primary issues in terms of the heat produced in the cylinder. One is detonation or knock. If you imagine our combustion chamber here, we basically have an inlet valve, our air fuel mixture goes in here, uh, assuming it's not a direct injection engine, we have that, and then we fire off our spark plug once we get into the compression cycle. Now the problem is that ideally we want our flame to go from the spark plug and propagate outwards in a nice gentle manner. But what can happen is that when you combine high levels of compression, you get high levels of heat. Once the spark plug fires, it compresses things even more, sets off localized pockets of heat where you can end up with the fuel igniting before the flame front propagates to it. Uh, this can happen in a detonating manner instead of deflagration. And this means that we end up with lots of little shocks and pitting, which can cause damage to the engine. And this is typically the manner in which high performance engines tend to fail. Uh, you can combat this by retarding spark timing, but that causes you to lose power. So what you can do instead is cool your combustion temps. And the easiest way to do that is to just add more fuel. The more fuel you add, the cooler the temperatures end up getting, particularly with things like ethanol and stuff like that, where you end up cooling down the spark chamber a lot because the latent heat of vaporization, which is basically how much energy it takes to vaporize that fuel, is high. So injecting your fuel cools your, your mixture, and that's how methanol injection works too. So basically, we've established now that injecting more fuel keeps our temperatures cooler. This solves the other issue I was going to bring up, which is our exhaust valve here. As these gases get hotter and hotter because we're throwing more and more energy in, you end up with a lot of heat building up in this valve. And the exhaust valve doesn't have that much ability to conduct a huge amount of heat out of it. So the net result of that is, is that you can get your exhaust valve hotter and hotter, exhaust valves melt, things go bad you can end up with the piston head melting as well. So basically, adding more fuel allows us to suppress our knock and it allows us to cool down our EGTs, our exhaust gas temperatures. This has added benefits for turbocharged applications because in a turbocharged car or any sort of forced induction car, the way it makes more torque or more power is because you end up with more air getting fed in each combustion event, more fuel therefore getting burned in each combustion event, and the result of that is, is that you're getting more energy from each combustion event. More energy, more heat. Uh, so turbo cars, we often run at ratios of around about 12 to 1 on gasoline. So quite low land values. And the High Performance Academy courses go into more detail on this if that's something you're interested in. Let's just talk quickly about lean air fuel ratios because they have uses too. When you're in a steady state cruise and you've got a combustion temperature that's well managed, you can actually lean up your mixture and gain back some economy because obviously you're burning less fuel. As you have a, a higher lambda value, there's less fuel going into the engine, you're burning less fuel. Of course, as you can see here, our torque is reduced, but there's a balancing point where you end up getting better fuel economy overall. So sometimes you can run cars on the lean side and at the very least, if you're not having combustion temp issues, you'd run it at the stoichiometric point and then you can get efficiency benefits. The other special case is diesels. Now in this petrol case, we've got our cylinder here, but diesels often have a slightly different setup. You end up with often an injector in the top. So we've still got our valves for inlet and exhaust, but the way diesels combust is that as this goes up, our direct injector sprays a cloud of fuel there, which ignites as we're spraying it out. And this means that we actually can end up with regions over here that have far more air in them. We can actually run diesel engines very lean. And this is often why you see diesel cars don't even have a throttle body. They control a lot of their power just through how they regulate their injection stages. So that's the basics of air fuel ratio. Uh, if you like this video and are a bit interested in some of the more details and someone with perhaps a bit more of an engine and tuning based background than myself, uh, go over to the High Performance Academy uh, website. I've got a link in the description. I'll put it on the video in the comments and go over there and check out some of their courses. They've got some free ones like I mentioned earlier. You can go have a look at those because they're really great resources. If you like this video, hit that like button below and subscribe to my channel for more videos like it. Leave a comment below on what video you'd like to see from me next and hopefully I'll see you next time.